Okay, we are back with example number four in chapters 4.1 and 4.2. Remember, we are still looking at axial forces. And I know that we are going to be looking at normal forces because we have two force members, okay? So the truss, trusses are made of two force members, so we know it's going to be that normal force, we're either going to be in tension or compression, is made of A36 steel members, each having a cross-sectional area. Determine the magnitude of P required to displace the roller to the right, 0.2 millimeters, okay? So because it's axial, because we're looking at that normal force, I know that stress is that internal uh, force over area. Stress equals E times strain. Strain equals change in length over length. And then we can rewrite that so that we have delta equals PL over AE, so, which is just these three equations blobbed together. So we have a truss made of A36 steel. I'm going to note that we are in um, SI. So let's come to our table here. Okay, and I'm looking for A36 steel, so we're going to come over. We are looking for the modulus of elasticity because it's that normal, so it's 200 gigapascals, and, you know, just to remember, a giga is 10 to the ninth. Um, if I needed the stress, the yield stress, and we are going to be in tension or compression, it is the same value, whether it's tension or compression, it's 250 megapascals, which is 10 to the sixth. Okay, so let's get those numbers written down. So I have an E of 200 gigapascals, which is 200 times 10 to the ninth pascal, which is a Newton per meter squared. And then I have a yield stress, and it doesn't matter whether it is in tension or compression, of 200, okay, of 200 megapascals, which is 200 times 10 to the sixth Newton per meter squared, okay? I know that if we are displacing this roller to the right, okay, we're displacing this roller to the right, 0.2 meters or 0 0.2 millimeters, okay? If this is bar AC and we move to the right, then that means the change in length for bar AC has to be the same amount. If I am measuring this to the right, that's got to be the same change in length. So this is also then going to equal our change in length for AC. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in meters. So it's going to be 0 0.0002 meters. 1, 2, 3 would give me 0.2 millimeters. Okay. Um, my area is given as 400 millimeters squared. So I have to make sure that I divide that by 1,000 and 1,000 to get it into meters. And I have an original length of 1.4 meters, okay? So I have lots of information. Um, I'm trying to go back and figure out what load P causes all of this. So I need to figure out how load P is related to um, member AC. So we're going to start now with our free body diagram of equilibrium, okay? So we have this triangle. And it's kind of offset here. So we have 0 0.8 meters and 0 0.6 meters. This is a roller. Um, if I can find CY, and I know that this, okay, I know this member is coming in at a 3, 4 uh, slope, then I can actually use that to determine the X component of this hypotenuse because it is a... Uh, it is a right triangle coming in, and here's the X component and the Y component and the hypotenuse. And I know how it's related because it's a two-force member. Um, so here we go. We have five kilonewtons, and we have some value of P coming down. So if I can get CY, I can get the force in the hypotenuse, and then I can get the force that's in this member as it relates to P. So let's sum the moments about A. And I'm going to get a negative P times 0 0.8 minus 5 times 10 to the third Newtons times 0 0.8, okay, plus CY times 1.4 equals 0. So CY equals, we're going to keep that positive, um, 0 0.8 times P 
minus plus, because we are moving those both over, 5 times 10 to the third times 0 0.8. And then we're going to divide both sides, okay, by 1.4. So CY equals, let's just go ahead and simplify that a little bit, 0 0.8 enter, 1.4 divided by, and we get 0 0.5714P plus um, times 5E to the third times, and I get 2,857.142, make that a 3, and this is in Newtons, we'll be solving for that in Newtons. Um, we've gotten everything converted. So 5e e to the third, 0.8 times, 1.4 divided by, 28.57, okay. So now that I know CY, let's go back and figure out the relationship here. So we can use method of joints, method of joints. And I'm going to look at here is CY of 0.5714p plus, 2857.143 newtons, okay? And um, if this is going up, the y component of our diagonal must be going down. So this is going to be the force in member BC. And if this is coming down, it's got to be going to the right. So the X component is going to the right, which means this is a tension member. Remember, it's pulling away its tension. This is that force in CA. So now let some forces in the Y direction. Up is positive. And I'm going to get that 4 fifths FBC equals... I'm just going to call it CY for now, and then we'll go back and substitute. So force BC equals 5 over 4 CY. Then we can sum forces in the X direction, and I'm going to get that FCA equals, okay, FCA equals 3 fifths times FBC. The fives cross out FCA equals three quarters of CY. So where does that, how is that important to us? Well, when we come back up here and we're looking at this delta equals PL over AE, we know delta, we know length, we know area, we know modulus of elasticity. We're trying to find that force in AC, okay, that force in AC, and we now know how that relates to CY, which comes back and relates to P. So if we have delta equals PL over AE, my delta is 0.0002 meters equals, okay, so this is the force in member AC, which is, here's the relationship with CY, which there's the relationship with my unknown force P. So I'm going to have three quarters of 0.5714P plus 285. 7.143, okay, L, PL, L is 1.4 meters over A, 400 millimeters squared divided by 1,000 times 1,000 gets us into meters times 200 times 10 to the ninth newton per meter squared. So everything we have now is in terms of newtons and meters. So I'm going to cross multiply and divide so that I can have a number equals and then I'm going to have this simplified, okay? So we have 0 0.0002, okay? And then I have 400. 1,000 divided by 1,000 divided by. So times, and then I have 200 e to the ninth times. So I get a, and, and then we're going to go ahead and divide by 1.4 divided by, and I get 11,428.571 equals, okay, we're going to go ahead and simplify over here, three quarters of 0 0.5714, 0 0.5714 enter 0 0.75 times, and I get 0.42855. 4, 2, 8, 5, 5, P plus 
Okay, three quarters times 2857. 2857.143.75 times, and I get 2142.857. So now we are going to subtract 2000 from both sides and then divide through by the 4.2855, and we will solve for that value of P. Okay. So I am going to swap and drop, and I'm going to subtract those out, and then divide by 0.42855, divide it by, and I get a value of P, okay, I get a value of P of 21667.749, that's, you know, Newtons, okay, and I'm going to divide that out by 1,000, so 1,000 divided by, and I get 21, P equals 21.67 kilonewtons. And what I really ought to do is make sure that, uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter if we yield or not because we had a measurable amount. We had a measurable amount right here. So there you go. This is what we have in terms of solving backwards for P.